Hi guys. Uh, what I thought I might do today is go over how to make the animated GIF for our uh, festival or any sort of animated GIF for that matter. So you may choose to do this entirely in Photoshop or use Illustrator to create your vector graphics. So uh, I actually have created mine in Illustrator, but I will need to bring this over to Photoshop uh, to do so. So what I'm going to do is simply copy each of these elements over into Photoshop and I'm going to create a new document at the correct size. You'll check the brief, but 1200 by 500 is what I'll be making. 72 DPI, this can change. RGB is for web, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I'm gonna say create. Uh, so that looks right, I'm gonna jump in. And I'm just going to paste my elements in. I'm going to paste them in as pixels. There we go. I might just scale that little fella up. Good. So um, I'm just going to repeat this process a couple of times. Just going to bring things in one by one. Uh, you can import Illustrator out to Photoshop, but I kind of think this is a little bit better. It makes things a little bit more simple. Okay. So I've just grouped a whole bunch of things, brought them in as pixels, there we go, that's my second piece. And I'll just continue with this, there's a little drop shadow or a spotlight kind of idea that I'm gonna have in here. Paste that in, pixels, lovely. And just arrange a few things as I go. And one more thing to bring in, now I've also got this element up here, I'm gonna, because it's a film festival, I'm gonna have this little curtain style idea come up and that's going to reveal my logo. So again, it's a vector. I'm simply copying and pasting directly into my Photoshop document that I have set up at the size. So there it is. And you'll notice that um, I only got a few layers. When I'm doing this kind of thing, I really would urge you to keep it simple. There's, if you have too many layers, um, you might find, you know, you're getting, you're biting off a little bit more than you can choose, especially when you first do it the first few times. But keep it nice and simple. And there is my background. Sorry about all that setup, guys, but it was worthwhile. So as you can see, I've only got a few layers here, right? So I'm only working with a few layers. This is my sort of idea. Now, when you're doing this, really pays to plan before you begin. Okay, so just keep it simple. One thing I will say straight off the bat that you can only animate or the potential you have is to move things left and right or up and down, left and right, up or down, or you can change the opacity of, or you can animate the opacity of something. There are your limitations. You cannot scale things, so I can't scale that up animated wise, like that can't be animated and I can't rotate it so I can't sort of have things do this. Your limitations are that you can move things left and right, up and down, and you can fade them in and out and play with their opacity. That's it, that's all you can do with the Photoshop timeline um, uh, workspace. So what I need to do is open up my timeline. So if you haven't got it open, go to the timeline, get that guy open, we have two choices here. We can create a video timeline, which we won't be doing just now. We are gonna create a frame animation and I'm gonna click that button there and there it is. So it's all good to go. One thing I will say is that um, when you're doing this sort of thing, um, make sure that you have um, named your layers, keeping it really simple and have a plan, all right? So have a plan. You can't add, as I get started, I can't add extra elements. I've got to have all of my bits and pieces on the stage before I begin. So it's really, really important to know that. So keep it really simple. Okay, so that's just a couple of tips for you. One thing I'll also say is have your layer edges open and I would always have that on. So I just turned on that view 
uh, show, the layer edges have that on because once things are off screen, maybe it's off to the side, uh, things could be a bit strange. So I'm gonna start with my curtain, maybe down, I think. Maybe down, I'll have it down, I'll have the reveal. Okay, something like that. I'm just gonna turn that off for a sec. This is my spotlight. What I thought I might do is I might um, fade that in. So I thought I might have that come on, fade it on, okay? So before I begin, I'm setting everything up. So at this point, I'm gonna turn his opacity way on down, like so. And there I go. So I can see that my curtain is down, my logo, is sitting on screen and I have my spotlight there, but turned down in terms of opacity. I'm gonna keep this really simple. All right, so let's get started. Got the setup, we know what we're gonna do. I have a plan, it's always good to have the plan. So on the timeline, we have one single frame. I need to create a second frame, which is this button here, like so. And when I do that, it duplicates the previous frame exactly it duplicates the previous frame so i'm going to say that i want my curtain to go up i want it to reveal my logo maybe i'll have it right off screen maybe i'll just maybe i'll have it there all right so it's going from that state to that state now to make this go if i hit the play button just now that's going to happen which is a little bit um Horrible, but what I want to do is select both of my frames. Shift to select both, holding shift to select both of my frames. And I'm going to apply this thing called tweening, and tweening will add some smoothness to the animation. So by doing this and clicking this button, I can tell Photoshop to give me 12 frames of transition so it's going to be a lot more gradual that that drawing of the curtain so i'm going to say okay to that uh my animation now looks like that which is good which is going quite well that's good i now want to bring on my spotlight so i want to make the spotlight fade in remember i can't scale it up i can only fade it in so i'm going to create another frame here, it's right here, I'm going to duplicate that frame. I'm going to repeat that process. So between here and here, I would like the opacity of this uh, spotlight to come on full. Okay, so between there and there, those two states, holding both of those last two keyframes, giving it some tweening, I'm going to say maybe May I'll leave it at 12. Okay, so it's going to be gradual. So it'll come on. My spotlight will come on. Looking good. All right. Space bar will stop and start the uh, timeline. So I'm here. All right. Um, I might hold that for a minute. Maybe I'll maybe I'll bring my curtain down. I'm going to keep this really simple. So I'm going to duplicate my last keyframe. So between here and here, I'm going to bring my curtain down. So to close my little festival, because a loop, which is what I'm trying to do now, is a good thing for an animation. So I like that my opening frame and my closing frame are the same. And that gives me this lovely looping animation. I don't get any jumps. So between this frame and this frame, I'm gonna add some tweening. Let's keep it at 12, nice and smooth. And it's going well. All right, so one thing we can do there, all of these frames have the exact same, same amount of time that they're on. And you can see under here, you've got zero seconds. I have zero seconds. You can, any of these frames, you can tell it to hold on that frame. And I'm, I'm gonna hold on my sort of this frame here. I would like the viewer to just have a little bit of time to take in that animation. So all the frames of zero second disposals. And the one frame that I want to hold, I can change the duration of that single frame. And then we hit the space bar to resume. One second, two second. One second, two second. 
and back on our way. And there is my animation. That's my GIF animation. So we're nearly there. That's it. So what we need to do now is to output the thing, and that's the final stage. So what I'm going to do, and I'm using Photoshop CC 2020, the, the latest version. So file, export, and I'm going to save for web. And uh, off we go. So we're in this stage now. I've got my size, which is correct. I could change this size if I needed a smaller file size, but I'm pretty happy with the way things are. I'm not going to change too, thing, too many things. What I will say about GIFs is that they love flattish colors. So very gradual gradients, very smooth gradients. You will find a bit of uh, diffusion or banding. So I try to avoid having smooth, smooth gradients. And you can see my animation is really kind of flat. So uh, I'm not going to change too much here. I'm going to hit save. With a bit of luck, that'll burn out. And I can give that its name. And that's my poster or my GIF, my uh, festival. Oops. Festival GIF.GIF. I'm just going to save it onto my desktop. I'm going to hit save. Nothing much to change there. So I can shoot back over to my desktop. If I can find it on my desktop, there it is there. You've got to open up a GIF with a browser. Just double clicking it, it won't open it. Open it with a browser or the the fork preview, Brett Chrome will work quite well. And there it is there. There's my animated GIF. Um, beautiful thing. I hope that helps, guys. So